Hello, hello, I'm Liao. Welcome back to our Spell Kids series. In the last video, we talked about how we can initialize our Spell Kit project, and today we're gonna go start it by talking about this topic called routing. So in Svelte, you write components. In SvelteKit, you create a web applications. Usually in web applications, you see components, elements on the screen. Hopefully it's written in Svelte. But you, when you click on the elements, sometimes when you interact with it, the URL changes. You go to a different page and then the, the content changes as well. So in SvelteKit, we're going to see how we can configure that um, so that you show a different Svelte component for a different URL. And that is routing, right? For different URL routes, different paths, you, have di you show different Svelte components. And we're going to configure that in Svelte Kit Project. I'm going to see, I'm going to show you how it's done. So let's take a look. So here, I start with an example. Right. Um, for example, in YouTube, this is what happens. Right. You see, in a YouTube, you have a list of videos. Uh, this is YouTube.com without anything. So this is like YouTube's homepage, and you have a list of videos. So you can probably write a video list, spell component for this one. And if you click on any of the videos or on any of these menus, you go to a you see that the URL changes, right? So here it changed to youtube.com slash watch, question mark something. And then now it's totally different content in the screen. In this, over here, you probably create a different page component in Svelte. You have a video uh, player. And if you click on any of the things, like for example, on the YouTuber, you see that now the URL changes again, right? youtube.com slash add something. This is the route. And now the content you see is different again, right? If I try to click on music, here you have channels, different again. Trending, you have fit slash fit slash trending, uh, a different content. And you have the, uh, when you click on movies, you have slash fit slash storefront, right? So how are we going to configure in SvelteKit for like a YouTube web app? Like how do we configure what Svelte component to show for different URL. And actually, it's very easy. So let me show you how. So for the homepage, you can imagine the URLs is, look something like this, right? YouTube.com slash nothing, right? So the YouTube.com is your domain, right? It doesn't matter where you deploy your uh, applications, which we'll talk about deploying later on in this series, but that is the domain, right? So uh, that is whatever your application is will sit inside this domain. So here for now, we don't have to care about it. What we care is what is the URL path of the current page, right? So the page, if it's a slash, right? This is the home page. Uh, maybe we have the home page not spelled, right? And then maybe later on when you click on the... Um, trending, you get into slash feed, slash trending. Maybe this is your trending page dot svelte. And then later, if you click on movies, you have the feed slash storefront. And maybe this is your movies page dot svelte. And if you click on maybe a video, you get into watch and then something which whatever after the question mark is called a search params in your URL. So for now, we're gonna ignore this. We'll just focus on the path name. So for this one, the watch, maybe we have the uh, videos page, right? Those felt. So as you can see here, you have many, many pages. Uh, I think the last one is if you click onto a YouTube channel, then you get uh, add something, right? some name, this will be uh, your channel's page. Not spelled. Right, so you can see that this is um, a list of URLs that for now what we can see from YouTube. And how do we translate that, right? How do we configure in your circuit project that uh, if you go to a slash, you see homepage. If you go to a slash watch, you see videos page. If you see 
uh, if you go to this fit trending, you see a trendings page, right? So how do you configure that? Yo, I recently published a book on Svelte called Real World Svelte. It contains various knowledge about Svelte, including Svelte context, Svelte actions, stores, and transitions. If you're interested about this book, you can get it on Amazon and I've put the link in the description. Go, go get it. What you need to do is easy because SvelteKit uses file-based routing, right? A folder-based routing. The routing is based on the folder or file structure of your project. What does that mean? Okay, so let me show you. Whatever routes that you have in SvelteKit is inside the source routes folder, okay? Source routes folder. And now, for example, you have these five pages, five, five, five routes, five URLs that you want to match to what component. What you need to do is to create a component specific in the specific uh, folder or file structure uh, in the source routes folder. For example, if I want to have a p component that is used to show the page when I visit this homepage, what I need to do is come here to source routes and then have it like a, uh, a slash and then create this special component file name called plus page.svelte plus page.svelte and this component itself will be used to show the home page right and by default when you create a skeleton project this is created for you right that's why if you go to the home page without anything you'll see this page okay but let's try another page right so here for example let me let me clear everything else so here, for example, for the watch, what you need to do is you go to the source routes folder and then to copy this, you create this folder called watch and then create this special file name called blastpage.svelte and in this, this, this component, you create this component and then this component will be used for uh, showing the content for the watch page, right? So, so let me show you how it's done, right? So here I am the source routes folder and I create a new file called watch uh, plus page.svelte. Uh, in VS Code, when you create a file name with a slash, it automatically creates a folder and then create a file for you, right? So technically, if I hit enter, you see that this is a watch folder and then you have a plus page.svelte, right? So I'm gonna say this is a, it's a videos page. And I visit watch, boom. You can see this is the page that we just, uh, this is a, this URL will show the component that we just created, right? Over here, this is that component will be used to render or to show when user visit this watch page. Or when you click on anything in your application that navigates to this page, you will see this component, right? It's that easy. So let's, let's try to do for the rest of the routes. So here, for example, for fit trending, I'm going to copy this, right? So this will be creating a file, a page that spelled component inside feed trending folder, right? Exactly it is. And then plus page that spelled, right? So for example, for feed storefront, then what you need to do is to create this page that spelled component in feed storefront folder, right? So here, um, let me, let me create this. Right? Feed storefront, right? So this is um, two folder, right? And then I create another folder called uh, Fit Trending. Right, so you see the Fit folder has two folders, Storefront and Trending. And then this one is the Movies page. And then Trending is the Fit, Trending Fit page. Right, so I've created a few page, spelled component. And now if I try to visit, for example, Fit Trending, Boom, this is the trending feed page. If I change it to storefront, boom, this is a movies page, right? I can back and forth changing the URL and then you can see that the different components being used to show on the screen when you change the URL. Right now, so the now the last part is the sort of hardest one because now we have a page that is at name, right? So this is, dynamic right in the url sometimes you have dynamic parts uh in your url right for this case for youtube uh it's it's when you visit a different channels 
different YouTuber channels page, you have this dynamic part. And it's common for pages to create URL with uh, dynamic parts in their um, URL. For example, if you go to a GitHub page, right? So if you go to GitHub, uh, let's say for example, uh, if you go to a Svelte project, then you can see that Svelte JS, Svelte, right? So this part is actually dynamic, right? Because GitHub has a lot of projects under Svelte.js, you can go to Svelte.js slash kit and you can go to Svelte.js slash learn.svelte.dev So the part in the URL, right, this part is dynamic, right? So you have one part is the organization and another part is the repository name, repo, right? So these two are dynamic. So how do we deal with dynamic, right? We cannot create folders like infinite number of folders in our Svelte kit project, that doesn't make sense. Right? So for dynamic part of the URL, what you need to do is that you create routes parameters. You create parameters, basically it's like you're telling Svelte kit that this part of the URL is dynamic. Uh, you can, uh, and, and you should treat it as a parameter. When you mesh any routes for this part, anything can be inside this content, then it should be a parameter for my page because I want to know uh, in my component, what is the value for this parameter, right? Does it make sense? So uh, for dynamic parts of the URL, what you need to do is you go source routes, right? Same thing. But for the dynamic parts, you use a square bracket and the name of the parameters, right? So in this case, the square parameter, and then we say this part of the routes, we want it to be called uh, want it to be like the channel name, right? Um, the name of the channel. And then of course, uh, don't forget to create plus page.svelte. So here, um, let me create this file, right? This, 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 this file. So here I'm gonna create a new file. And then uh, I say this is the channel. I save this and now, I can visit any page, right? So ASD and can also be ABC. I can also be DEF. Any, anything dynamic can be part of this, this channel, right? But of course it has to be just one part, one segment of your path, right? So if you try to do something like, uh, like two segments, right? For example, DEF and ASD and you hit enter, then this is this does not match, right? The brackets itself can be anything, but does not contain that slash character, right? So if you have a slash, no, it doesn't work like that, right? If you really want to have a slash to match, uh, then you have to write a different way of writing it, right? So uh, for now, we have dynamic parts, right? So let me show you another one, right? So imagine we have to create another route called awk repo. Then in this case, we're going to have source routes. So this is the organization and a slash, this is the repo name. And then boom, page.svelte. So this is what you need to create. So here I'm going to copy this and create this file, right? So you have org repo page.svelte. And then this is the repository page. If I save this and if i refresh this this is the repository page this is the component this plus page as well is the component to show when you have when you visit when a user visit this page so that's it for now in this video you can try and practice this at home try to visit different app, uh, web applications that usually you use like github youtube or maybe spotify um, or anything that usually you use observe their url and then see uh, what are the URL patterns and when you click on them, do they change to different content? And then try to come back to your Svelte kit projects and try to create them in your projects, right? So for now, you don't have to write out your Svelte component to show that for the content for that page. You can type like me, right? Create some text and then when you try to open the browser to visit that URL, copy the same URL from the web apps that you use uh, minus of the domain name, just the path, and then see whether you go to the same, uh, whether you, ex you, you reach to the same component of the page um, that you've just created. 
Oh, and that's it for this video. If you like this video, give me a huge thumbs up and remember to subscribe so that we can continue our Svelte Kid journey. Bye bye! I will be doing my first in person workshop in London about Svelte and Svelte Kid this year, 4th of April 2024. We will be building a photo album app using Svelte Kit and Cloudinary. Tickets are selling fast, and I will see you there!